Hello everyone. Previously, we had taken a look at the contents of the financial statements. Financial analysts depend primarily on these statements to diagnose financial performance. If properly analyzed and interpreted, financial statements can provide valuable insights into a firm's performance. In this video, we are going to be talking about one of the tools of financial statement analysis, that is ratio analysis. And today, we will quickly learn about the top 15 ratios. Let's begin. A ratio is an arithmetical relationship between two figures. Financial ratio analysis is a study of ratios between various items or groups of items in financial statements. Financial statement analysis may be done for a variety of purposes, which may range from a simple analysis of the short-term liquidity position of the firm to a comprehensive assessment of the strengths and weaknesses of the firm in various areas. Let's now see the importance of ratio analysis. It helps analyze the profitability and growth trends of a firm, also helps analyze the liquidity and the operational efficiency of the same. It helps identify the risks associated with the firm. It provides guidance to investing and it also helps in planning and forecasting. Financial ratios have been classified as profitability, liquidity, solvency, turnover and earnings or valuation ratios. Profitability reflects the final result of business operations. There are two types of profitability ratios, profit margin ratios and rate of return ratios. Profit margin ratios show the relationship between profit and sales. The two popular profit margin ratios are gross profit and net profit margin ratios. Rate of return ratios reflect the relationship between profit and investment. The important rate of return measure is return on capital employed. Gross profit margin ratio is defined as gross profit upon net sales. Gross profit is defined as the difference between net sales and cost of goods sold. This ratio shows the margin left after meeting manufacturing cost. It measures the efficiency of production as well as pricing. Net profit margin ratio is defined as net profit upon net sales. This ratio shows the earnings left for shareholders as a percentage of net sales. It measures the overall efficiency of production, administration, selling, financing and pricing. Jointly considered, the gross and net profit margin ratios provide a valuable understanding of the cost and profit structure of the firm and enables the analyst to identify the source of business efficiency and inefficiencies. Return on capital employed, also called the return on assets, is a very popular measure of profitability. It is a measure of business performance which is not affected by interest charges and tax burden. It abstracts away the effect of capital structure and tax factor and focuses on operating performance. Liquidity refers to the ability of a firm to meet its obligations in the short run, usually one year. Liquidity ratios are generally based on the relationship between current assets and current liabilities. The important liquidity ratios are current ratio and quick ratio, also known as acid test ratio. Current ratio is a very popular liquidity ratio. The current ratio is defined as current assets upon current liabilities. Current assets include cash, marketable securities, debtors, inventories, loans and advances and prepaid expenses, while current liabilities represent liabilities that are expected to mature in the next 12 months. The current ratio measures the ability of the firm to meet its current liabilities. Current assets get converted into cash during the operating cycle of the firm and provide the funds needed to pay current liabilities. The higher the current ratio, the greater the short term solvency. Quick ratio, also known as the acid test ratio, is defined as quick assets upon current liabilities. Quick assets are defined as current assets minus inventories minus prepaid expenses. The acid test ratio is a fairly stringent measure of liquidity. It is based on only those current assets which are highly liquid. Inventories are excluded from the numerator of this ratio because inventories are deemed to be the least liquid component of current assets. 
solvency ratios help in assessing the risk arising from the use of debt capital the important solvency ratios are debt equity ratio interest coverage ratio and debt service coverage ratio the debt equity ratio shows the relative contributions of creditors and owners it is defined as debt upon equity the numerator of this ratio consists of loan funds and the denominator represents shareholders funds the lower the debt equity ratio the higher the degree of protection employed by the creditors interest coverage ratio also called the times interest earned is defined as earnings before interest and taxes upon interest a high interest coverage ratio means that the firm can easily meet its interest burden even if profit before interest and taxes suffer a considerable decline debt service coverage ratio used by term lending financial institutions is defined as profit after tax plus depreciation plus other non cash charges plus interest on term loan plus lease rental upon interest on term loan plus lease rental plus repayment of term loan financial institutions calculate the average debt service coverage ratio for the period during which the term loan for a project is repayable turnover ratios also referred to as activity ratios or asset management ratios measure how efficiently the assets are employed by a firm these ratios reflect the relationship between the level of activity represented by sales or cost of goods sold and the levels of various assets the important turnover ratios are inventory turnover debtors turnover and fixed assets turnover ratios inventory turnover or stock turnover measures how fast the inventory is moving through the firm and generating sales it is defined as net sales upon inventory the inventory turnover reflects the efficiency of inventory management the higher the ratio the more efficient the management of inventories debtors turnover ratio shows how many times accounts receivables or debtors turn over during the year it is defined as net credit sales upon debtors the higher the debtors turnover the greater the efficiency of credit management fixed assets turnover is defined as net sales upon net fixed assets this ratio is supposed to measure the efficiency with which fixed assets are employed a high ratio indicates a high degree of efficiency in asset utilization while a low ratio reflects inefficient use of assets valuation ratios indicate how the equity stock of the company is assessed in the capital market since the market value of equity reflects the combined influence of risk and return valuation ratios are the most comprehensive measures of a firm's performance the important valuation ratios are price earning ratio and yield price earning ratio is perhaps the most popular financial statistic in the stock market it's defined as market price per share upon earnings per share the price earnings ratio or the price earnings multiple as it is commonly referred to is a summary measure which primarily reflects profitability growth prospects risk characteristics and shareholder orientation yield is the measure of rate of return earned by shareholders it is defined as dividend plus price change upon initial price this may be split into two parts the first part being dividend yield and the second part being capital gains or capital appreciation I hope you really like this video. Thanks for watching. Do subscribe to the channel to avail more videos on finance, economics and strategy.